Hey everyone, how's it going? Matthew here on the channel again. I'm joined by my wonderful co-host and best friend. Alan. Hey man, great to see you. Now in today's show, we're reviewing another sort of big blockbuster again on the channel. And it's of the name Free Guy starring Ryan Reynolds and, and Jodie Comer. So um, this film's been pretty, pretty big. I, I've heard a lot about it. I, when the trailer came out um, a, a lot of months ago now, I remember it had a lot of traction. A lot of people seem to, seem to enjoy it. So the film's finally come out and uh, your favourite podcasters are back to talk about it. So I'll pass over to Callum to explain what's been going on in, in this movie and what it's about. So the, the principal story is Ryan Reynolds' character, Guy, uh, realizes one day that he's a, a non-playing character within, uh, within a, a video game, uh, you know, where, where he sort of, his, his mindset is broken out by the appearance of Jodie Comer's character. Uh, and I think anything further uh, w- w- would be going into spoiler territory. You know, I, I don't want to say too much. Uh, I will say, though, if you watch the trailer, I, th- I think it's very good. Uh, you get a very good grasp on what you're going to see. I don't think there's a huge number of surprises. You know, my, my amount of spoiler comments is is quite minimal because uh, because I think you know a lot a lot of you know the, the essence of this film is is captured in the marketing. Yeah, no, completely, completely. I think they really did do well with the trailer of of, of getting people engaged with it because it certainly it certainly seems quite um, quite original in the sense that it does combine a lot of different things from a lot of different movies and TV shows, but. Uh, on a whole i really had a great time with this but um just before we kick off the review thank you very much for everyone who supported us recently and on the subject of good trailers uh obviously the spider-man no way home trailer released this week and we did a little bit of a, a podcast on it so you can go check that out it was one of our most recent videos we talked to, I, you know i thought man that was going to be a five to ten minute chat it was like 50 minutes or something crazy but um yeah we got stuck in with the mcu spider-man just it was just a good superhero movie chat which i enjoyed um so um yeah go check that out if you'd like and uh, yeah, of course, our time codes, email, iTunes link, all that jazz in the description below as always. So um, be sure to check that out. And of course, if you've seen Free Guy, let us know. We're always there to read and react in the comments. Um, yeah, bro, if, if you want to open up with the, with the non-spoiler thoughts then. Yeah, my, my points are, are very general, you know, a lot about the visual style. Uh, and, you know, encompassed in that is the fact that unlike uh, the Ready Player approach, uh, sorry, the Ready Player One approach uh, of, you know, representing these in-game avatars with cgi i know that being one of the most expensive films ever made because i'd say at, at minimum half of the film is uh 100 cgi you know i i think this film exposed that that approach was unnecessary you know perfectly admirable but but unnecessary you know provided you trust your audience to make sense of it you know here uh you know we have jody comer and ryan reynolds playing the playing the in-world uh avatars and it, you know I, I i think provided you respect the intelligence of the audience you can absolutely do that yeah, completely, bro. I agree. I think it does a really smart thing in having the video game have a great sort of cartoon aspect to it, but it's also real. Like it feels tangible in a sense as well. And for the most part, I think the effects are really, really good. Um, I'd imagine this movie probably had a, a massive budget and given that it's, it's got a lot of star power in there as well. And, you know, on that note, I think Ryan Reynolds' humor, it, it's always been a bit hit or miss for me because I think it's, it's weird because he's got a classic style like the classic Ryan Reynolds style here is very similar to Deadpool and Green Lantern um, from what I've seen him in and, and, and things like that so I, I, I guess it wouldn't be for everyone but I personally re- find him really funny I, I really think Ryan yeah, Reynolds I mean, is absolutely are, great here there's a lot, of, a lot of wank jokes in this yeah no, there, there absolutely is and I, I couldn't really put a button in what genre or sorry what um, demographic the film's aiming for is it a kids film do you think or is it for the family or what do you think because I think the rating in, in the UK was like a 12a or something so you know it's oh, not yeah. our tip it's not the typical rating you'd expect what do you think yeah you know I, th- I think it's a uh, family appropriate for the most part you know every every uh, you know more juvenile or inappropriate joke is uh, is you know it's metaphorical uh, you know r- rather than a uh, you know, explicit. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, th- I think it's perfectly family appropriate, but I, I do think it is hitting, you know, the, the younger end of the Deadpool audience. Uh, but, you know, I think I think it's fun and appropriate for everyone. You know, we, we saw this with my dad and, you know, he he seemed to, to really yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, no, for, for sure, for sure. And you know, on the subject of the cast members as well, um, there's quite a quite a lot of star porn here, as I said, you know, Taika Waititi, Joe Keery from Stranger Things and Jodie Comer. And um, I hadn't actually seen Jodie Comer in anything. Um, before this but she's actually she's fantastic man and her, her american accent is very good i think and i think she's um a native brit if i'm correct yes she's from liverpool uh you know so even even her british accent in the film isn't you know her her native uh, yeah. accent actually so i mean she she's she's always known as uh 
you know, a masterful uh, accent user. Uh, you know, yeah. in, in Killing Eve, she plays a Russian character, and you know, uh, she 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 is renowned for for her accents and yeah, her she's great. and her uh, foreign language work. Yeah, no, she's fantastic. I, I'm surprised I haven't seen her in more Hollywood stuff. Hopefully, this will be her, her big break. You know. Yeah, 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 she's she's mostly just done uh, you know, smaller British stuff, and then Kill, Killing Eve was sort of her, you know, her her massive uh, breakout thing where she was shunted into the into the spotlight. But you know, in Mad Fat Diary, you know, she she was great. Uh, you know, the, those would probably be the the two things I've seen her in. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I think there's there's very likable performances all around. You know, Ryan Reynolds, you know, as you said, he's sort of doing his his den, you know, his general shtick. Uh, but you know. Jodie Comer, uh, her her character, I think, is is one that we've seen in every film about people playing video games. Uh, you know, she's the more, uh, you know, intelligent gamer girl kind kind of persona. You know, I think uh, that that plays more into the story that, that we won't get into uh, just here. But you know, she she plays an archetype that, that we have seen before. But I think the fact that they're both absolutely charming uh, is all you really need in a film that is you know purely intended to entertain. You know, the the this the there there is a you know a great draw to a film that requires, you know, kind of no intellectual connection. You know, we, we have it with Fast and Furious, but that's like dumb. This is like not challenging, but not dumb. So it's, it's, it's something, it's, it's something new uh, as a genre piece, I think. Yeah, definitely. I, I had a really entertaining time with that. I think it's great. I think it's got something for everyone. You know, it's got a little bit of adult humor in there for like the Deadpool fans, but it's also got enough for like, you know, I think kids could enjoy it as well. Um, I mean, yeah, like I think I think the film's also quite heartwarming in places. It's got that kind of, you know, a little bit of a Truman show aspect to it, which was sort of seen in the trailer as well. So um I, I think Ryan Reynolds did a great job on it. I was kind of sending you as well. I think there there's definite sort of room for more of this style of film, maybe a potential sequel. I, I don't know, but I think there's definitely a lot of potential here. Yeah, I'm I'm looking for, forward to hearing what, what you think they could uh, carry on in the in the spoiler thoughts. Uh but, you know, when it when it comes to the the visual quality of this film. Uh, I think this is this is the one that I this this the type that I love the most. You know, I, I think you know whenever you're looking at a film, color is everything. Uh, you know, I, th- I think that's the the most important thing about cinematography is you know light and color, I, because you know w- when you're absorbing like a new world, I think you know your your instinct has you decide whether you know you're going to have fun with a film based on how it's filmed, which is kind of what I'm concerned about with Spider-Man: No Way Home, because you know you know when you compare uh, you know that film to the the Raimi trilogy or to the Amazing Spider-Man films or particularly the Amazing Spider-Man 2 it just looks it looks very gray MCU uh you know the moment where like Doc Ock comes out of the comes out of the smoke you know everything's dark and gray and you know I just don't know that it says you're gonna have a fun time with this yeah I think a film's color palette's actually some really underrated you know I, I think this film's so vibrant so colorful and you get a real you get a real energy from it, you know, you get what it's about, whereas with a lot of MCU films, like Civil War comes to mind with the airport scene, like as much as that's an amazing scene for me, it, it does seem quite dull, um, especially when you watch sort of the enhanced versions on YouTube where someone's just got the footage and just, you know, made it so vibrant, it looks, it's night and day really, you know, to be honest, and I think this this film really, it, you know, whenever I always think, like whenever I'm making like a thumbnail for one of our videos, if a film's poster is colourful and stuff, that's always good, you know, and this film's color palette is vibrant enough to do that. But, you know, it's sometimes when you see a film that's really gray and bland, like you, you kind of have a negative thought going in automatically, like a negative judgment Um, for me. Maybe that's a bit harsh, but yeah, I think this film really, really has a great visual quality, man. Yeah, for me, it's less, you know, am I going to like this or am I not going to like this? It's more, you know, is this going to be, you know, a, a thought provoking poignant film or is this going to be like a fun time at the cinema mm-hmm. uh you know and that that usually is you know not always but you know the the, the visual quality is the is the usual distinction between that because I, I you know i want i wouldn't say with uh you know the snyder cut of justice league i was like you know having a fun time like it is it, you know it's kind of like you know a bit a bit of a bummer in comparison to, to other uh, uh other films of the genre you know but it's yeah. a great a great watch you know it was oh, yeah. incredibly well put together you know it looks great uh, you know, but but I mean, I, I don't think I don't think any of Zack Snyder's films are meant to be fun. Yeah, they are. They are. They're they're, they're they have a deeper layer to them, don't they? And um, I'm not sure who. Do, I think yeah. I think the director director of this it, it it's it, it is the same guy. I think he did you know the Night at the Museum films and I think Real Steel mm-hmm. as well. So those kind of ones. So it definitely fits that vibe. I think you know this really colorful 
colorful world where like not everything makes sense but you know it's for families and stuff and it's it's just i don't know it, it definitely fits into that ballpark for me um and i, I actually think you know if the pandemic aside you know wasn't a thing this film would have done really well at the box office you know i'm sure it still will but um i think this is this is a start of something potentially really special you know i think it's great yeah and you know the the window between this and uh you know it, it coming out on demand is is quite narrow i, th- I think it's i think it's a 45 day release window mm-hmm. but you know you, you said you know uh it kind of gets away with not making sense sometimes and you know i did have some uh initial issues going in uh you know regarding like the the sentiency of of certain characters but you know i i think the film really managed to iron those out by by, by the time the movie was over yeah no completely completely um i think the film is quite confusing in places um especially if if you really look into it but i guess with this type of film you know you can in certain aspects switch your brain off and think this is just this is good this is really entertaining it's really fun i'm having a great time here and it, it is more than just a popcorn film for me. Like it does have a, a deeper layer to it. Um, but but for me, I think um, I, I think they, they've done well in terms of it's not like overly confusing where I'm like analyzing like what the hell is going on here. You just, it, it makes sense for what it is, I think. But yeah. Yeah. I don't have anything further uh, in the no? non-spoiler section of, of the review. Me neither. So Matthew, it, it's it's time to ask uh, the, the classic movie mates question that I hope uh, I... I mean, I, I hope that we came up with it. I hope that I hope that you know we haven't accidentally stolen that from someone. But you know, fingers We're crossed. It now, eh? uh, would you consider Free Guy a massive hit or a piece of shit? It's got to be another massive hit in the channel. I don't know how many massive hits I've given out this year, but I'd imagine it's quite a lot. There's been no real disasters so far, and and this f- film certainly isn't that. I think this is a really entertaining film where it you know a lot of people can enjoy this, a wide demographic and. Um, there's a few like sort of little references and stuff in the spoiler section that I'll mention that make it even more charming. Um, so I had a really great time with Free Guy, a, a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, what about you, man? Yeah, it's a massive hit for me as well. You know, I thought this was going to be, you know, a, a decent time. You know, I thought I thought it was going to be fun. Uh, you know, but but I was maybe going to have some some issues with it. You know, be be a, be a little bored. You know, a lot a lot of video game movies don't don't appeal to me because I'm not a gamer. Uh, you know, but, the, but this was this was really accessible, really funny. Uh, Ryan Reynolds delivers. Jodie Comer, uh, you know, is finally getting her, you know, her, her her big cinema career, which I'm I'm really excited about. And she's she's uh in in a film near the end of this year, The Last Duel, uh, which is Matt, uh, a Matt Damon film. Uh, and I think is it Ben is it Ben Affleck. I'm not I'm not 100 sure on that, but I'm looking forward to that regardless. So yeah, very very successful, very surprising. Uh, I think if you've seen the marketing. Not not hugely surprising uh, narratively, uh, but you know I think entertainment value wise uh, a big surprise. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you there, bro. Um, moving on into spoilers now. Um, I, as I said in, in my sort of summary of of, of the film, um, there's a lot of references in here from a lot of different um, you know walks of life. I think the main one main ones for like you know kids would probably be like a lot of the YouTubers and the streamers get a lot to do here. Um, I think the only ones I really recognized were, um, I think, Ninja, Jack, Septicai, and Pokemon-y, or Pokemon. I don't know what her name is, but... Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah. Um, yeah, so they were the big three that I noticed, um, but I'd imagine for, for people who were more into that sort of streaming stuff, they noticed a lot more, but that's all the ones I spotted. Um, I wonder if they if that was like a thing in their channels where they had to market the film or something. I don't know, because it seemed like they all three of them have a huge audience, like, so... I imagine the film would do quite well marketing wise. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about that, you know, because uh, you know, I'm thinking who's who's the one getting more out of that arrangement, uh, you know, because obviously, you know, I'm sure Jack Septicai fans, you know, would uh would be encouraged to go see the film just because he's in it. Yeah, uh, definitely. and then you know that's generating them money, but then he's also getting to be in a film. So I mean, you know, it's, it seems like a a very mutually beneficial situation, uh, you know, but but I but I wonder who's getting more out of that. Yeah, I'm curious as well. I'm curious as well. And then I suppose the other sort of cameos or, um, well, one actor has a, more of a cameo, um, but Chris Evans and Channing Tatum were, were sort of really real fun ones I enjoyed. What did you think about their appearances? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chris Evans, uh, his his appearances, yeah, just, just, just a kind of very, very, very brief appearance. Uh, and it's in reaction to what, what I consider a, a, a bit too forced of a scene. Uh, you know, it's a scene where uh, where a guy uses, you know, both Captain America's shield and a lightsaber. Uh, 
and I don't know. I mean, this this was before. I think this was produced. Uh, you know, before the Disney Fox yeah. merger was definitely before it was finalized. Uh, you know, but but I I don't I don't know if it was you know even in discussion at that point. Uh, but you know, it felt it was very interesting. You know, I, I wonder how they got the rights to do that. Uh, you know, they maybe uh p- passed over a few Marvel characters under the table. <laughs> uh, you know, but it it felt it felt a bit it forced to me. Yeah, I got that as well. It, it's kind of set, seemed like um. You know, it was a cool idea they had in paper that they didn't know how to put into the film, so they just put it in here. And with that, you know, that, that scene involves sort of another kind of joke uh, with Dude, sort of this really bodybuilder buff, Ryan Reynolds. Um, I think that was a real shame that it was spoiled through the marketing. Um, Ryan Reynolds' mm-hmm. own YouTube channel had put up a whole video on this, and I think that would have been a really hilarious reveal if that was never marketed. Um, you know, unless it got leaked or something, but um, I, I thought that was that was a real missed opportunity there. Um to be honest, but I, I still really enjoyed it on the last. The, the way they've sort of molded his face and someone else's body um, is, is it wor- works for humor. You know, I, I, find, that, I find that good, I find funny. Yeah, I mean, it seems, uh, it seems Ryan Reynolds uh, that does that, you know, fairly often, you know, with, with him also playing uh, Juggernaut in Deadpool 2. But yeah, with, with the character of Dude, you know, he's, he's sort of referenced, uh, you know, a couple of times before he actually appears. And yeah, I, I think it would have been this really interesting thing to, you know, have, have the audience question who that is or what he's going to look like and then and then you you have the moment and it's played as a surprise but the but the marketing has has let them down a little i mean i guess you know films uh i mean you know they, they release these trailers and they get you know countless views on them uh but then they kind of approach everything in the film as though uh as though it's you know someone going in completely fresh which i mean you know i suppose, I suppose that's that's fair enough but you know when it, when it comes to big reveals sometimes they are a bit of a letdown yeah yeah i think i think it's always a a risk of a film re- relies on the big reveals for plot points um and that's, that's kind of something i'd suddenly mentioned with the no way home trailer that i hope that film isn't just big reveal for the sake of doing big reveals um but yeah i mean i don't have much more to say in this borders as i say the film's not really spoiler heavy like the, if you, i think if you watch the trailer you probably get a good gist of what the film's about there's no major sort of surprises as you rightly said um yeah but, it's, it's essentially the trailer and then the ending you know so the only yeah. spoiler is the ending really yeah and, and with that like it will be interesting to see if they do a potential sequel with that maybe with different characters or do you think this this franchise would need ryan reynolds behind it i yeah i, I think uh, they, they would never make a sequel without ryan reynolds but then i just have to question you know is the sequel you know jodie comer in the real world doing stuff or is it you know an adventure within uh, you know, within uh, what, what's it called? Uh, the the, uh, oh. the new the new game. I don't remember. So like Paradise uh, something is it? I can't remember what it's called. It's called it's called uh, free free something free life. That, that's that's what it's called by by the that's end. Uh, you know that, that that's not that's not the the initial game that uh that you know Keys and uh whatever her name is Nelly came up with. Uh, you know the, that, that that's the the new the new game formed by the end. Because, I mean, you know, if you have a mission in there, you know, is it actually of any consequence? I mean, now that they're unfortunately, you know, all too aware of, the, of, of their, you know, artificial existence, you know, w- would would an adventure, you know, watching something play out as an adventure in the in that game actually have any have any consequence? I yeah. don't know. Because, I mean, they are real, you know, they have thoughts and they have life, but it's artificial life. So, I mean, I, I don't know. If an audience could connect as well you know at least in the first film you know millie's going in there and you know there's the danger of them losing their lives uh you know as, as these artificial creations but then you know we we I, I i don't know how they could i don't know how they could up the stakes or even maintain them if it was set in the game yeah i think that's a really good point bro to be honest with you and surprised because the film really underplays the fact that guy is the first ai ever like the film really underplays that as in um, you know, in terms of just life, like if that happened in, in uh, today, it would, it would be big news. Um, yeah, I, I think I think I would potentially like a sequel with with Jodie Comer and Joe Keery, but because by the end of the film, you kind of realize that Guy is just like the love letter, as they as they put it. You know, Guy is just like the stepping stone for that relationship. So um, I'm not too sure. I think I think it potentially could work without Ryan Reynolds, although Ryan Reynolds is without doubt my favorite part of this film. So it would be a bit bizarre seeing a free guy movie without guy in it. Um, but I, you know, I, I think Joe Carey and, and Jodie Comer are, are really good together. So I, I'd like to see see more of that dynamic because it wasn't really fleshed out as much as I thought it was going to be or would have liked. But 
Still yeah, you know, of course, uh, as as you said, they they end up get they end up fuck they end up together in the end. Uh, and I think some people took issue with that ending a little. Uh, you know, presumably to them, you know, it felt a bit lackluster. The you know guy gets all this build up. Uh, you know, he he falls in love and then in the end doesn't get the girl. I mean, you've got to remember, you know, he's code and she's a human. Yeah. Uh, you know, e- you know, either way, you know, th- this game isn't, you know, like in Ready Player One, uh, you know, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're in, a, in a VR game, you know, where you can have, you know, body sensitive suits where you can like feel things, uh, you know, that, the, the, you know, happen in the game. So, I mean, hypothetically, you know, you have, you know, a, re- a relationship, you know, across the world uh, and that could work. But here, you know, it's it's just you know like, you know, a a two D game on on a screen. So I mean, there's no there's no tangibility yeah. there, you know, for her going into the game. So I mean, you know, the the there would be no way, even if she, you know, thought, oh well, you know, I can I can I can, you know, understand the fact that he's you know, technically a you know a creation of myself. You know, he's not actually a human. But you know, even if she got past that, you couldn't really have a satisfying relationship. I think it would have been interesting if they get the guy design and he's actually like a real person in the film. Like that's where I thought yeah. it was maybe going where like, you know, Ryan Metals exists in this universe or something, or, you know, uh, you know, him playing a normal, a normal person. But I think that could potentially like, be an like avenue. Like the Terminator being based off Sergeant Candy. <laughs> like something like something interesting. Um, because I, I think there's maybe potential to have like a real life, Ryan Reynolds um in, in there. Um but that being said, I, I don't have any further remarks in the film, bro. You know, w- when it comes to the romance, you know, I I think uh had had you told me that by the end, you know, they didn't get together, I maybe would have questioned that. But you know, w- when you actually watch it play out, it makes perfect sense. You know, I think it was a mistake not to show more of Keys as a character. You know, it's implied that, you know, by all intents and purposes, he has all the positive attributes that Guy does. You know, so I think if both Guy and Millie are satisfied, uh, you know, with their choices by by the end of the film, fine by me. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I think Joe Keir is a really wonderful actor. I really I really like him in Stranger Things, and it's a pity he doesn't get more work. I think hopefully now he's starting to get a bit more stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I'd love to see more of more of his character in a, in a future film. So yeah, that, that's everything for me as well, Matthew. Yeah, I suppose, man. If you're gonna give it a rating out of ten, then as we sometimes do, Ooh. what would you give it? I'm struggling here because, uh, you know, pretty much I've I've only seen good films this year, which is shocking. I mean, good in a in a, in a loose enough sense, you know. Mm. Black Widow was average. Fast and Furious is a Fast and Furious film. Uh, but you know, I I've I've had a a good time at the cinema with, with every film I've seen. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the, this film I think it was my favorite blockbuster of the year. Uh, you know, I'd say I'd say the, the Danish films we've seen have probably been have have been my favorite. Uh, but the, this is this is probably my favorite blockbuster. You know, it's it's not it's not standing among you know the, the greatest films of all time. You know, I, I know you uh, yourself preferred the Suicide Squad, uh, but here, you know, I think this was, you know, tailor made for the side of my brain that just wants to have fun uh, with with a film. You know, it it wasn't uh, mentally challenging or, or taxing. You know, it it didn't leave me, uh, you know, pondering anything afterwards. Which I mean, you know, so sometimes people want something demanding, and sometimes I want something demanding. Uh, but you know, I think it it just is the the perfect encapsulation of you know what you want a summer blockbuster to be so i mean i i would rate it very favorably in, in that mind and probably give it a, a nine and a half out of ten you know i didn't i didn't actually take issue with anything that happened in it you know i didn't take issue with you know anything in the in the way they approached it so i i i have no i have no problems with it yeah it really surprised me as well callum to be honest i i think it's a really a really clever film and um, there's a lot to be enjoyed in here it's not perfect but you know it's i didn't expect it to be perfect you know it, it's not it, it's not, you know, it doesn't claim to be anything other than what it is. And I, I think, I think as a film, a lot of people will really enjoy. I certainly did. I loved it. And I'd probably give it, you know, a, an eight to an 8.5 out of 10. I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, but yeah, that concludes another mini review on the, uh, on the channel. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, thank you very much, Colin, for your time today. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are all well. Hope your family and friends are keeping safe and well too. So, uh, take care everyone and uh, bye-bye. Bye.